Antifa is a Soviet era PC euphemism. Let me explain. When Americans hear the term Antifa, anti fascism, they immediately assume, and they're meant to assume, that anti fascism is something that's good. Anti fascism is fighting fascism. Who wouldn't want to fight fascism? Fighting Nazis. You know, Antifa, back in the 30s, they fought the Nazis. God bless them. How can you be against people who fight Nazis? People who fight black shirts in Italy or Franco in Spain? You can't. You know, progressives, the left loves its euphemisms. Barack Obama didn't wage the global war on terror. He waged overseas contingency operations. He didn't wage war. He employed kinetic action. They love their euphemisms. You know, illegals aren't illegal. They're undocumented. Looters aren't looters. They're uh, undocumented shoppers. Progressives love euphemisms. And one of the earliest euphemisms we have is Antifa, anti-fascism. What am I talking about here? Antifa, anti-fascist action as it began in Germany back in 1932, was sort of a vanguard movement of the Communist Party of Germany, the KPD in German, the German acronym, the German abbreviation. It was a Stalinist party. They were controlled by the Comintern from Moscow, from the Kremlin, from Stalin. They were bankrolled by the Comintern. That's where they got their money. That's who funded them. And in the build-up to the election of 1932, which had a number of candidates running, among them Hindenburg, who ultimately won, and Hitler, uh, we know about him, was also the leader of the Communist Party of Germany, Ernst Stallman. Stalinist. Took his orders from the Comintern, from Stalin. Antifa was their vanguard organization for that election. But you have to understand what it meant. What did anti-fascism mean in 1932, not just in Germany, but more importantly, in the Kremlin with Joseph Stalin? How did Stalin and his uh, Marxist, Leninist, philosophical guys come up with this term? What was anti-fascism? Anti-fascism. A fascist organization was any organization that wasn't communist. Communism was the wave of the future. This was where society would end up, this international communist organization. With dictatorship of the proletariat, practicing true democracy. Basically, we know best for everybody, that's democracy. Not bourgeois democracy, where you ask people to actually vote and voice their own opinion. That, that, that's not real democracy. That's bourgeois democracy. And anybody who supports the idea of bourgeois democracy, anybody who supports the idea of capitalism, is a fascist. So by definition, Hitler and the Nazis were fascists. But so was the Catholic Center Party. So were any of the other national German parties, nationalist German parties. So were the monarchists. So were the royalists. So were the Social Democrats. The big party, the left-wing party in Germany, which predominantly controlled the Weimar Republic during most of its history until the end. They were the worst kind of fascists. They were social fascists. They claimed to be socialists, but they weren't. They were supporting capitalism. They were supporting bourgeois democracy. They were social fascists. Hitler was a national fascist but they're all fascists. So when you, they use the term Antifa as anti-fascism, that doesn't mean they're against what you think as an American. You hear the term fascist and you think, Adolf Hitler, guys in brown shirts, they're fascists. Mussolini, black shirts, they're fascist. The Falange in Spain, they're fascist. Yeah, they opposed all those groups, but they all 
also opposed everybody else. And in the 1932 election, the communists, instead of supporting one of these other parties, they should, could have supported the nationalist parties and uh, Hindenburg, but they didn't. They could have supported other parties, but they didn't. They kept aloof. They didn't support anybody. They opposed all the other parties. Why were they doing that? What was it they hoped to accomplish? And this is an important point. From the point of view of the Kremlin, from Stalin, remember, this global revolution is coming. It wasn't supposed to start in Russia. Russia was too backward. It was expected it would start in a place like Germany or maybe Britain. But it started in Russia for whatever reasons. Can't go into those in this video. But they wanted it to spread. And the place they really wanted it to spread was Germany. So all through the period from you know, the establishment of, of Soviet Russia, Bolshevik Russia in 1917, right up until Hitler, their policy with regard to Germany after its collapse in World War I was to undermine the Weimar Republic. So the job of the Communist Party in Weimar Germany wasn't to support left-wing parties against right-wing parties. It was to support no one, to oppose all the parties, and ultimately to help bring about the collapse of the Weimar Republic. Do away with the Constitution, do away with the Republic. And when that happened, given the previous collapse of the old regime, the Kaiser's regime, Germany would fall like a ripe plum into the hands of the communists, the Socialist Revolution the Socialist International. That was the role of the Communist Party in Germany. It wasn't to prevent Hitler from getting into power. In fact, from Stalin's point of view, the fact that th these idiots, the Nazis, were taken into the government and becoming Hitler becomes chancellor, from Stalin's point of view, this was a good sign. Because it meant, it showed how desperate the Weimar Republic was, how it was on its last legs. It was on the verge of collapse. This was a good sign. This was a good thing. And anything that helped the collapse of the Weimar Republic along was something to be supported. So that's why Antifa doesn't try, their job isn't to stop Hitler and the Nazis. It's to bring about the dissolution of the Weimar Republic and the collapse of, of the, the Constitution. So they don't support anybody to stop the Nazis. Now, of course, Hitler gets into power. One of the first things he starts to do is to crack down on the communists. And they very quickly realize that they, they screwed up. It takes until 1935 for Stalin to realize that, mm, you know, things didn't work the way in Germany that he thought they would. Far from, yeah, I mean, the Weimar institutions are being destroyed, but they're being replaced by national socialist institutions. The labor unions are outlawed, but there's a national socialist labor union. You know, the professional organizations, doctors, lawyers, the others, outlawed. There's a new national socialist organization that replaces them, and so on and so forth throughout the entire state. So they've, re they've gotten rid of the Weimar regime, but the regime they got in power is even is worse, is a danger, not just to the communists in Germany, but to ultimately the Soviet Union itself. And Stalin starts to you know, get, a, get a hint of that, like, oh, maybe this didn't work. Now, of course, why did this happen? Stalin's not relying on the communists in Germany to tell them what's happening on the ground. You got people you know, in offices in the Kremlin you know, smoking and having some vodka, thinking about what's best for German communists. I mean, that's the idea of a dictatorship of the proletariat. You don't let people vote. You don't let the communists in Germany tell you what the hell is going on in Germany. You know better than them. You're part of a dictatorship of the proletariat. Ah, uh, yeah, sure, the communists in Germany are going to you know, suffer some losses and all. Yeah, they're going to, they'll take a, but in the long run, the Weimar Republic will collapse. And then we'll have power. So in the meantime, they just have to pay the price, as rev good revolutionaries are expected to do. <laughs> it didn't work at all. As I said, Tommen ends up, you know, if you're a German communist, you either flee the country, 
or you end up in a, a Dachau or some other place like Dachau, or you end up dead. They just pick you up and execute you. That's what happened. The German communists are you know, decimated. The Weimar Republic collapses and replaced by the Third Reich. That wasn't part of the plan. But that's how Antifa got started. And I think it's an important lesson. It's important to understand this, which, of course, most Americans don't. Most Americans don't know anything about much of anything. And that's why they don't understand any of this. They don't know any of this. They don't really understand the terms. What did it, and this is the whole problem with Antifa. What does Antifa really mean? Antifa doesn't mean fighting Nazis. From a point of view, if you look at anti-fascism, what it means in the American sense in 2021, being Antifa, being an anti-fascist means, yeah, you're against Donald Trump. You're against uh, neo-Nazi groups. You're against the Green Party. You're against the Democrat Party. You're against all of them. Joe Biden is a fascist. Kamala Harris is a fascist. Barack Obama is a fascist, by their definition. Bill Clinton's a fascist. Hillary Clinton's a fascist. They're all fascists. Fasc you're a fascist if you're not a communist. If you believe in the market, if you believe in capitalism, if you believe in free and open elections, you are a fascist to these people. You know, democracy doesn't mean what you think it does. I would love to see somebody ask Bernie Sanders, a self-professed Marxist, Bernie, you're for democracy. <laughs> what does it mean? How do you define democracy? Do you define democracy the way Bill Clinton would define democracy? Or do you find, define democracy the way Kim Jong-un defines democracy over in the Korean People's Democratic Republic or whatever it's called? Or how they define democracy in the German Democratic Republic before East Germany fell? They were de Democrats. They believed they were Democrats because they have a different, def def uh, different, excuse me, different definition of democracy than you have. They have a different definition of fascism than you have. And you have to understand that when you look at Antifa today. Now, right now, they're in a common front group timing, like they did in 1935 with Stalin. When he realized that this hadn't worked in Germany, then they started telling the communist parties in the various European countries to work with the left-wing countries to prevent something from happening there as happened in Germany. They didn't want Nazi-type parties in France or Britain or Belgium or any of the other countries coming to power. So they had to work together. They had to work together in Spain against Franco and, and the nationalists. And that's pretty much the policy they're pursuing today. They'll work with the Democrats. But you have to understand, they're not working with the Democrats because they believe in democracy. They're not working with the Democrats because they believe in open and free elections. They're not working with the Democrats because they believe in capitalism. They're working with the Democrats because they want to do what they tried to do in Germany during the Weimar Republic. You work with sides not to support one side against the other. You work to support a side that, in your view, will ultimately lead to the collapse of the country, the political collapse of the country. And that tells you a lot about Antifa, and it tells you a lot about the Democrats. Why would Antifa work with the Democrats? Because they think in the long run, it's going to destroy the fabric of this society. And ultimately, the hope is the ripe apple will fall into their palm of their hands and they'll gain control. That's how they expect to win. They're using the Democrats to destroy the Republic, just as at various times they used the Nazis or the Social Democrats in the 20s to try to undermine and destroy the Weimar Republic. And I think the lesson here for the Democrats, of course, it's one that they're not smart enough collectively to ask, is why is Antifa helping us? I mean, they obviously welcome the help. They're funneling support to them, and it gets funneled back to the Democrats. 
But why is a group that's anti-democratic, anti-capitalist, supporting the Democrat Party? It's not because they think, you know, that their Democrats are secretly communists or socialists, although some of them are. It's because they believe that the policies the Democrats will pursue will destroy the institutions and the fabric of the American Republic and kill it. That's what this is about. That's, and when you see Antifa supporting the Democrats, that means that Antifa believes it's in their interest to see the Democrats pursue the policies they're pursuing because they know where it's going to lead. And we got a hint of that where it's going to lead Wednesday. That's what they want. They want more of that. Now, I'm not saying that they were behind what happened or they, you know, agent provocateurs, they had snuck in. That's, that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking, you know, intellectually. They're seeing what they want to see. And they'll continue to do what they've been doing until the proper time comes. Hopefully you got something out of this. If you did, leave me a comment, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos, share the video with your friends. And until the next time, keep fighting.